I've done two videos now on leaves and one of the most common comments is, can I use the leaves from this tree or that? And it's because there's a ton of misinformation out there in regards to leaf toxicity and how it can affect your plant. And I'm here today to give you some science-based information on exactly what you need to be concerned about when choosing a leaf to either compost or use as a mulch in your garden. So let's jump into it. The great leaf debate can be broken into two separate categories. The first one being that leaves have high levels of lignin and low levels of nitrogen. Number two is that the tree leaves contain allelopathic properties, essentially chemicals that inhibit or disrupt plant growth and seed germination. So let's break these both down. The first one being lignin and low nitrogen. Now all plants have lignin. It's one of the most common compounds on planet Earth. So it's not just in tree leaves, it's in all plants. And the second one being low nitrogen, which we know leaves inherently already have if we've watched some of my past videos discussing the carbon to nitrogen ratio. Now the leaves that come up most often for having higher levels of lignin and lower levels of nitrogen can include trees such as beech, oak, holly, and sweet chestnut. Now I'm not going to get into what lignin does and its purpose in plants in this video, but what I will speak to is its role in soil. So what role does lignin play in our soil solution as we like to call it? Lignin can affect the humus layer, which is essentially that layer of fluffy stuff before you get to your mineral soil. It can also over time affect your soil structure. So in the event of having a clay soil, it may help to fluff it or aggregate it a bit more. Or in the case of a sandy soil, can actually help with water retention, nutrient retention, and just overall actual aggregation, which we tend to not see in sandier soil structures. It's also incredibly important in soil biodiversity in regards to giving microbes a happy home to live in, and also in the retention of nutrients and water just overall, which reduces leaching and overall battery charge of our soil. With the addition of extra humidity and microbe homes, we also tend to see some disease or pest durability, I guess we could say. So where lignin becomes a problem in our soil system is that it is resistant to degradation. The reason why it's resistant to degradation is actually the complexity of the bonds itself and just the structure of lignin. Now, some plants have higher levels of lignin than others. So the claim that XYZ tree leaf would be higher in lignin doesn't fall on deaf ears and is incredibly real. Now, the higher the level of lignin, the longer it takes to decompose. And when we couple this with nitrogen, because we know that nitrogen is needed in decomposition because it is what fuels our microbes to decompose. So leaves naturally have low nitrogen. That is just a fact. If you use leaf mold or it as a mulch or you add it to your compost, it is a fact that it is a heavy carbon source, a low nitrogen source. That's why when we use it in compost, we tend to put in more greens to help leaves decompose. So the question becomes when we have high lignin and low N, we end up with a material that takes a very long time to decompose. Now, the length of decomposition is relative to the level of nitrogen. And if we have higher levels of nitrogen, the decomposition rate goes up because we introduce more food and fuel for our microbes to do the decomposition. So is this claim valid in those specific species or any species that has high levels of lignin and low nitrogen? And yes, it is valid if we were to incorporate this in a soil system, for example, use it to amend a clay soil or a sandy soil, we do run the risk of nitrogen being removed from that soil system and no longer available to our plant roots. Makes sense. But if we wanted to use it as a mulch, for example, well, now the conversation begins to change. So long as our roots, transplants or perennials are great examples of this, are lower than the soil surface, about one to two inches of the soil surface, we don't have to worry about this. And it actually gives us the benefit. The reason for that is because there's no nitrogen now available to weeds or weed seeds that could germinate in those top layers. And it actually acts as a great weed barrier. 
Now, that is a benefit. If we were to leave that untreated and use it as a mulch, either as whole leaves, shredded leaves, leaf mold, you name it, then it works wonderfully. However, if we wanted to, we could add nitrogen fertilizer or like urea in the case of the synthetic fertilizer, or if we want to go the organic route, we could go with a blood meal, which is a higher nitrogen source than most other organic fertilizers. And if we amend our leaf mulch or our leaf mold or our compost with this nitrogen, we will see this decomposition process take place faster. And that allows us to get the benefit of that humus material in a soil profile in the event that we need to incorporate. So the short answer to the high lignin, low nitrogen problem that we see with some plants is either A, add some nitrogen if you choose to use this as a compost or a soil amendment, B, I would actually leave it in its own right and use it as a mulch, either shredded, whole, or leaf mold. You could do leaf mold with these still. It's just gonna take a little bit longer to make the leaf mold as a mulch on our soil surface in a perennial or a transplant bed, where I would not use these species of tree or trees that have high lignin, low nitrogen, is in a seeded area. Meaning if I'm using lettuce, radish, potato, anything I'm direct sowing, I would avoid the use of this material because we're working with a root system that has not yet established below that two inch benchmark that we're looking for. Okay, number two is allelopathic properties. Now I'm gonna start this conversation off with the fact that all plants have allelopathic properties because it is just mother nature doing her job. Essentially what that means is that a plant has chemicals in it and the idea that the plant will eventually lose its leaves, drop them to the ground and decompose means that they don't want competition in the off season. So the way to counteract the competition is to release chemicals of your biggest competitors. So every plant has this. This is why with compost that's not properly aged, we tend to see stunted seed germination, poor growth, and just wonky looking plants. It's the allelopathic properties of the compost. It's plant-based. Remember, all plants have these compounds. Now there are plants out there that are a little bit more insidious than others. And one that falls in the tree family is black walnut. And we all know Juggalone because it is a hot topic on where exactly you need to put your walnut leaves. Now, Juggalone is toxic to plants, no doubt about it. But the question becomes, can you use these leaves or are they completely junk because of this intense allelopathic property we tend to see in this plant? And the answer to this is that it is slightly misconstrued as to how dangerous this is. And those leaves can be utilized in the right way depending on the environment you're using them in. So black walnut trees, the leaves themselves can suppress growth directly under the tree. And this is because of juggalone and the intensity and buildup over the years. Now, say you remove these leaves, you put them in a compost and you're making a leaf mold of them. Well, now the juggalone begins to decrease in its intensity as the leaves decompose. Now, remember, we don't wanna incorporate this into our soil because we wouldn't want allelopathic properties in any intense matter incorporated into our soil. And that includes just regular compost that's not properly aged. The question becomes where could we use these and see really good benefit? Well, the answer is again, as a mulch. We're talking about a tree that is toxic to other plants that suppresses their growth. Weeds that we don't want to grow, thistle, dandelion, whatever the case is, this is a great leaf mulch to use in the form of leaf mold. I would try to decompose this to an extent before applying it to the garden, just to kind of dampen those properties slightly. Now, if we were to mix black walnut into a compost mixture, then we have no problem at all. You're already diluting it even more by mixing it 50-50 with your greens or other tree leaves even further lowering its intensity. Plants I would not use this with are in the tomato family. So eggplant, tomato, peppers are not great candidates for the black walnut as a mulch or soil incorporated. And that is because these are typically very sensitive 
to the toxicity of black walnut. However, if you had a flower bed or if you had a brassicae bed, so cabbage, corn, that sort of thing, or if you had a perennial bed, the use of black walnut leaves are going to be great. Now, you can test this, and I encourage you to test it in low doses over time to see where it works for you and the intensity of your mixture based on what you're doing, whether it's directly using the leaves, if you're doing a leaf mold, or how you're mixing your compost. Because I can't say with any certainty what that toxicity effect is going to be for you because everyone's composting processing and their dilutions are going to be different. If you're worried about it, go on the lower side. And if you wanna experiment, then I would go as high as 50% in your compost mixes. Now, again, never incorporate a black walnut into the soil for soil amending. I would use a different leaf for that. But in a compost or as a mulch, absolutely give it a shot and see if it works for you. Again, a test plot only. Now, hands down, where you should not use any leaf at any time, regardless of the lignin or the nitrogen or the leopathic properties, is in the event that it is diseased. So if you have powdery mildew or rust or even pests such as caterpillars or worms, don't compost this and don't mulch it and don't leaf mold it because we want to reduce the spread of that. So instead choose to throw it in the garbage. I know it's a hard pill to swallow, but ultimately speaking, unless you're really confident in your ability to compost, I highly encourage you to stay away from incorporating it in your garden whatsoever. So that is a rule for all tree leaves. If you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, subscribe, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.